And there's the team that Michael Vaughan was referring to. The conundrum for the selectors was to strengthen the batting without weakening the bowling. And effectively, Stuart Broad is the sacrificial lamb because Ryan Sidebottom is fit again. He does come in to strengthen the bowling attack. Broad misses out. They reckon he's tired mentally and physically. And yet he's playing for his county Nottinghamshire at the same time. It's an odd decision, but it's one based on Broad's bowling form. Only 10 wickets all of the international summer at virtually 60 apiece. Paul Collingwood's back in the side. That in itself is an issue. Should one of the younger players, Ravi Bopara, for example, who's in good form for Essex, be in the team in place of the more experienced Collingwood? Now, the South Africans. Good news. The captain, Graham Smith, he's fit. Dale Stain isn't, but they got Andre Nell. He's a more than useful substitute. Geoffrey, it's all talk about the game at the moment. Yeah, I think uh, Nell for Stain is lucky for England. He's not quite as good. But I think England is the problem here. It's the inconsistency of their batting that they're worried about, and everybody is. Morley Morkel with the new ball. That's an opportunity, is it? Whoa, I wonder if that has carried to Paul Harris in the gully. Morkel gets this little bit of extra bounce and, and movement off the seam. Oh, well, Jeffrey! He, he turns Cook round here. Watch him turn him round square. He's playing it to the onside. Look, he's in a real mess and a tangle with his feet. And it loops up, but... Oh, it would have been a cracking catch, wouldn't it? Just carried, but difficult. Now, that might run away for four. This has been an excellent start by Monet Morkel, who's been given the new ball instead of Dale Stain, who's not here. And he's causing all sorts of problems. And now he's got under one as Andrew Strauss. He's got all the time in the world on the back foot. This pitch is especially slow, Geoffrey. Well, I think it's a perfect pitch for hitting the Antini. Antini likes bounce. He's a pacey bowler, like short of a length, and the ball will just sit up like that. Oh, plenty of time. Way too short. Still have to put it away, and he's done it well, Cook. Oh, that's a good shot. Just sort of swung into Cook there, and he played it late and nicely. 50 up for England. Good partnership there, really, when they've been playing and missing quite a bit. So England have got away now. The pitch is playing well. The sun's out. It's not doing as much. And they're beginning to time and middle the ball. Oh, well bowled. Beautifully bowled. And a little bit of luck for uh, Alistair Cook. Of all, all the luck this morning has gone England's way. Whenever South Africa have bowled a good ball, Graham Smith knows. The batsmen have either played and missed, thick-edged it for runs. But it's 68 for none off 22 overs. believe it the hesitation from everybody except for the South Africans who have realized what has happened Andrew Strauss has hit wicket and it's only a couple of years ago since the most famous of all hit wicket dismissals do you remember Shane Warne treading on his stumps against uh, England in that famous Ashes match that's just what Strauss has done here and that's a big disappointment he's made a good platform for England with Alistair Cook but he's got to go, unfortunately, for 20, and England is 68 for one. 2 0 21 for Michael Vaughan so far in this series. He's been uh, not quite the talk of the town, but uh, people are certainly concerned for him and with him. He needs runs. He's on strike to Andre Nell on the back of that unusual Strauss dismissal. He cannot believe it, the England captain. He doesn't think he hit it. Alim Dar's finger was straight up. The appeal was instant. wonder if he did hit it. He has said in the press that he's had a couple of unplayable deliveries so far in this series. Well, it was a good delivery from Nell. Angling in and going past the edge. A little bit of a brush with the bat on the pad there. Off he goes. First baller for Vaughan. Vaughan's despair at Alim Dar's decision was evident. Let's see if we can glean anything at all from the snickometer. There's movement on the graph. It's not a sort of a, a clear movement that tells you he definitely hit the ball. 
the top picture suggests that the bat isn't brushing the pad. Who knows? Such a level of responsibility on Peterson again. At least he's got an anchor already set out there with Alistair Cook unbeaten on 43. Here we are then. And Peterson's in line and plays it beautifully. No hat-trick for Andre Nell. Oh, that's close. That is close. That's the one that goes the other way or goes straight on. And it's good enough for the umpire to send Peterson on his way. Peterson can't believe it. He's standing there, not sure. And the South Africans gathered around in celebration, but Peterson virtually having to be dragged off here. Very disappointed is Kevin Peterson looking for the replay. He had batted out of his crease. This is the one that goes the other way from Jacques Cullis. Very intelligent bowling. And uh, Kevin Peterson on his way. I think he's a little confused whether he's caught or whether he's uh, LBW. Peterson's got to go. 74 for three. Now, Makairantini, he's got to pitch the ball up. The danger for him is he likes to bang the ball in short of a length with pace. And that's a single for uh, Cook. Very nice work, 50. Played some lovely shots, particularly the pull. Played and missed at uh, Morkel early on, but he survived well, and now he's in good touch. Oh, short ball again put away. That's the danger. For South Africa with them teeny bowling. Can't resist bowling it short. And Bell's put it away magnificently. Oh, what a shot. Mortal just teased Cook with one wide and full. Good shot. He's only a short man, Ian Bell, but he really got tall on that. A high bounce, he was on top of it, and the timing exquisite. It's a 50 partnership by this pair, and it's the second or third time that Bell has played with wonderful fluidity. Edge, caught, is it? He's claiming it. And I uh, think that uh, Cook has gone. What a delivery from uh, Andre Nell. He's got it a lot straighter, made him play. And then uh, he got the edge, Alistair Cook. And what a catch from uh, Jacques Cullis. It's a beauty. It really is a beauty. He's got a lot of ground to make. He gets two hands to it to make sure. He takes it comfortably in the end. Pleased as he may be, think of Alistair Cook. 60 at Headingley. You thought he had 100 for the taking. Now 76 here at Edgbaston. England 136 for four and grappling a bit. Yes, caressed through the offside bell. That's his favourite stroke and particularly for the people in Birmingham as well, where he plays a lot of his cricket. Still he's on naught, 34 minutes, finally gets him off. And that's actually a crisp shot from Collingwood. That'll give him some confidence. Morkel seeking the Yorker or the pitched-up delivery with the batsman out of position. But he responded well, Collingwood. It's gone. Well caught by Graham Smith. A little bit of swing there for uh, Jack Cullis. And Paul Collingwood is on his way. And I wonder what the selectors make of it. It's pretty good ball, and it's not very well played. That's the bare truth of that. Collingwood needed to present a straight blade and get the feet going, but a lack of confidence, a lack of certainty at the moment with the, everything that's going on around him and the team has caused the problem. England are the ones with the big problem too. 158 for five. Beautiful shot. Really is a class shot. 50 for Ian Bell, and he's played really, really well. Oh. Yeah! 
Big appeal behind, not from the bowler though. Oh, and up goes the finger. There's a bit, a bit of uh, controversy about that one. Mackay and Tenney, he hasn't had the best of days, but that could change now. Ian Bell's gone. Beautiful length. I don't think there's any doubt this is out myself. I think it's more guilt from Bell, maybe tinged with disappointment as well, frustration being in such good form. Just the thinnest scratch. Lovely stroke play, made 50. But boy, what a situation for England having won the toss. 173 for six now. Oh, shot. Well, they've just tied him down. And there's a very ordinary slow bowler. He just gives him one so wide and juicy that Flintoff caresses it through the covers. Oh. Nice little touch from Tim Ambrose. Members of the... 2005 when Andrew Flintoff and England wicketkeeper then Geraint Jones shared a crucial partnership well Flintoff's in with another wicketkeeper so far they put on 23 oh. now Flintoff has found a gap For a long period of attrition here a lot of balls have been left alone just outside off stump but that one over pitched allowed Flintoff to throw his arms at it, he didn't time it perfectly can England haul themselves to a position of parity out out, played on I got the impression from Callis that was a slightly slower ball and he was there too soon was Ambrose, he went off the inside edge he, he got caught with his footwork thought it was coming quicker it didn't that's a good wicket for South Africa. It's more misery for England. Ambrose has gone for 22. 212 for seven now. Oh, that's out. That's a very good catch, low down. It's just a little tentative tail end is poke at the ball. And that's a good wicket for South Africa. And Teeny around the wicket. We haven't made much mention of Mark Boucher either throughout the series. He was lacklustre at Lords, but this last few innings he's been keeping wicket superlatively well. Side bottom's gone for two. England 215 for eight. Oh, he's hit that. Now then, there's a man out there, but it's cleared him. That's six. I think he'll be looking to attack Andrew Flint off now. There's eight down. He's just got the tail ender with him. Jimmy Anderson. Oh, this is tight. No, Jimmy Anderson's there, I think. Uh, when they get a direct hit, usually the feeling side think that they, they've got the decision, but we'll see in a moment. Bet this is out. You can tell by the way people celebrate. Oh, that's infuriating. Flintoff is playing so well. All he needs is someone to stay with him. Uh, he has every right to look downcast. That's a, that's a terrible shame. England 2.30 for nine. Ah, oh, Monty's away and the crowd are with him. And it means he'll retain the strike. Oh, wait a minute. What will he? Oh, no, 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 no. No, that's insane. Insane. It's sacrificial. Flintoff has stormed off, livid with himself, doubtless. All of which means that England have been bowled out for 231, losing 4 for 19 in 19 balls at the end of the innings there. But the real shame is that Andrew Flintoff has finished unbeaten on 36. It was a craftsman's effort, really, to, to hang on in there and then to begin to explode with his strokes and nobody else was around to support him. Mind you, he has to take a bit of the blame himself. 50 for Ian Bell, that was a beautiful innings, as was Alistair Cooks, but that's a deeply disappointing scorecard. The South Africans, nothing for Morning Morkel. Can you believe that? He bowled wonderfully well, particularly with the new ball. Two for Makai and Tini, who was much better when he pitched it up, and three each for the impressive Andre Nell and Jacques Cullis. If ever a captain needed a rallying cry, it's now. Straying onto the pads of Mackenzie that time, Anderson really struggling with his line today. That's a valiant effort by Sybottom, but like everything else today for England, I think it's gone wrong. Edged and caught! Second ball! Beautifully taken by Andrew 
Andrew Strauss. You can't keep this man out of the game. What a superb entry with the ball from Andrew Flintoff. Take a bow, Freddie. Take a bow. Wonderful bowling. First one was a warm-up. Second one, Smith had to play. Strauss sees it coming. Up she goes. Thank you very much. The wicket they wanted, and that man has done it. Smith, 277 here five years ago. Today, only seven. 17 for one, South Africa. Bob Old. Didn't know much about that, the night watchman Paul Harris. And was picked up four runs, four leg buys that's given us because he was taking evasive action. South Africa survived until the close, 38 for one when stumps for drawn. England have an advantage of 193, but it's not much of an advantage, particularly if weather conditions stay as good as this. The second day at Edgbaston dawned with a gathering in the middle and a very open team talk led by Peter Moores and Michael Vaughan but with key contributions from Kevin Peterson and Andrew Flintoff. This was a frank and honest discussion as England seemed determined to put a bad first day behind them. Beautiful leg glance, four. Excellent stroke. There's a touch of swing out there for Ryan Sidebottom. Didn't carry, did it to slip, I wonder. Yes, Andrew Strauss has taken the catch. We're going to have one of these issues here. We're going to have one of these issues. Will McKenzie wait? Now, the umpires will come together to discuss whether it carried. This is the problem with using television, because the pictures are inconclusive. Low catches are enough of an issue to encourage a batsman to stand. Strauss has told McKenzie that he's caught it. Now the umpires are going to refer it because they're not sure. This will lead to a not out, in my opinion, because uh, there's no 3D TV and it'll always look. You can see the slope which goes down the, the hill and this will always look like it doesn't carry. And that looks like it bounces. Let's have a better look at this one. I think that's... Oh, well, over to you. Umpire number three, did it bounce on the fingers? I think that's actually carried, but uh, whether the umpire will give it out, that's another thing. That's right, I think that ball's carried into the fingers. Now, we've heard from the third umpire, and the decision is not out. Neil McKenzie will come back to the crease, and one of cricket's biggest issues is right before you. Oh, dear. That's flashed almost through Paul Collingwood. Mackenzie's riding a bit of luck in this little period here. Oh, lucky. Well, nothing really going England's way this morning. That was perfect for side bottom. Get Harris forward, but it slid off right in the gap between the fielders. Oops, eventually. Well, Ryan Sidebot has got his man. Harris is the night watchman that's hung around, played and miss, nicked him, frustrated him. They were despairing if they were ever going to get him out. But 94 for two, I think there's still enough in this pitch. Yeah, absolutely right. And Sidebottom there has done the right thing, just kept plugging away, didn't get too frustrated or angry with himself, and finally ended that little vigil from Paul Harris, which lasted an hour and a half for 19 runs, 94 for two. Good shot. Wide half volley, but McKenzie's in. And that three runs will bring up his 50, play very nicely. Batted a long time in this series. He's got a good patience and concentration. A great mental attitude. Well played, young man. Oh, well, did he hit that? Did they think so, England? Bat and pad or pad and bat, it really is. What a brilliant bit of feeling by Jimmy Anderson. What a fantastic athlete. Wow, he's a wonderful fielder. Never mind his bowling. Of all the greats I've seen in the past, they're not as good as him. Didn't he go here? He goes like a whippet to get to this ball. 
Now that is just fantastic. It's almost desperation winning the day for James Anderson. That is just fantastic. And it's just what England needed. Hashim Amla made nine. It's 117 for three. Again on the pads, this time McKenzie's made him pay the full price. That's a beauty. That's very, very close. There he goes. There was absolutely no doubt. Flint off strikes. The talisman is back. What a delivery. Now the game's on. Fantastic intensity from Andrew Flintoff, and that is his 200th test wicket. Very, very hard work to try and unpick McKenzie from the crease. That one hitting off stump, dragging in from just outside the line, defeating McKenzie's attempted whip across the stumps, and isn't he celebrated and happy? That was a big breakthrough for England, getting out the obdurate McKenzie for 72, 135 for four, South Africa. Two key men in the England camp, Otis Gibson on the right and Andy Flower on the left, batting and bowling coaches. The one on the left, he won't be very happy about what's happened in this match so far, but maybe the guy on the right will be quite pleased with England's performance today so far. Great shot. Jack Cullis hasn't been in the best of touch, but that's a beauty and a trademark. Dear, oh dear, how did that Mr. Stumps? Just a little bit of late swing and an inside edge from Jacques Cullis and he's got away with it. He's having just a tad of luck. Two wide from Anderson looking to try and get the swing but actually just sitting up nicely for Prince to flash away through the offside. Shot by Ashwell Prince. Uh, maybe Anderson's getting a bit tired here. He's in his 17th over. Prince on to 13, 182 for four, South Africa. Just 49 behind. England badly need to break this fifth wicket stand. Oh, oh beautifully bowled. Oh, really got Callis in a tangle. What about that? What about that? England have applied so much pressure in the last, what, 45 minutes. Flintoff has been brought back just for this breakthrough, and he hasn't got it. We are right on the brink of tea, and, uh, well, it isn't a chance, so it doesn't go begging, but it's a moment that England may rue and South Africa may savour. Fifty for Jacques Callis. Nice innings. Played very comfortably and very intelligently. Things look more compact than at any time in the series, which has been a difficult one for him. That is some stroke. That is a powerful strike by Jacques Callis, and it wasn't even a long half volley from Ryan side bottom. The ripping, snorting thing past Callis's chest. Tremendous look. Now the crowd behind Flintoff. This is what he's always thrived on. This is his place, his domain. Can he drag England back into the match tonight? Brilliant, brilliant. What? No, Alim Dar says no. This is a magnificent over by Andrew Flintoff. Why isn't this out? Why is this not out? Did it hit the bat? It's hit the toe. It's got to be absolutely dead plump. I love watching Jacques Cullis bat, but that's it. On the end of the toe, it's so close to the stumps. It's What is it missing? You'll never forget it if you were here at Edgbaston today. 
And Callis, well, he was just overwhelmed by uh, the power of Flintoff. Beautifully bowled. No need for the umpire to get involved in this one. Bang, over they go. A beautiful Yorker. <laughs> well bowled, Mr. Flintoff. You deserve it. This is fantastic cricket here at Edgbaston. Jacques Callis, what an innings that was. 64 he made. He's given South Africa such a chance. They're 226 for five. Oh, that's off the pads. Leg buys. 231 now for South Africa. Five down and the scores are level. Well, now, now Ryan side bottom underneath it. And he catches it, and Flintoff has another. And Esbaston is going through the roof. What a display from Andrew Flintoff. Single handedly, he's turned this test match into one in which everybody will now be interested. Never in any position to get that away, A.B. de Villiers. Scarred it, it hung in the air for a long, long time. Flintoff strikes again. Six down for 238. Now then, Freddie, Mark Boucher's first ball. England with four slips, a gully, a short leg. Oh, oh that's the one. That's a nightmare to bat against. Well, I think the light's got a bit darker, and uh, the way Flintoff's been bowling, very aggressive and nasty fast bowling, I think this is a correct decision by the umpires. You've got to be fair to both sides, and the umpires have tried to keep play going as long as they can, but it has got darker. That man there has got England right back in the game with a fantastic sustained spell of hostile fast bowling. And the light never got any better. South Africa finishing on 256 for six. England took two wickets for six runs in 13 balls. Jacques Callis did all he could to resist them. He and Neil McKenzie played extremely well, as has Ashwell Prince, who's unbeaten. A wicket for side bottom, one for Anderson, four for 68 for Andrew Flintoff, the talisman once more. The overall situation of the game, South Africa 25 in front with four first innings wickets in hand. Him. That's so important. Ryan side bottom strikes first up for England. Good moment for him because it's not been his best performance so far. But it's such a good moment for England. It will lift everybody around the ground. Moreover, it'll lift the players in the middle. And it really hurts the South Africans. Well, it won't do anything for the South African dressing room. It's an awful shot. It's so wide. He wouldn't even think of playing it normally. He's just in so much good form. He's gone after it. Big wicket for England. Prince out for 39, 264 for seven. There's a good stroke. And that'll be four. He's pretty good timer of the ball. England want to be aware of Morty Morkel. Now he drives him straight down the ground, having switched a ball around the wicket. Beautiful cricket. This is exhilarating. In the air, but it's gone wide. He went hard at it, Mornay Morkel, and just a little bit of luck running with him. That's very, very close. Up goes the finger, Alan Dyer, straight away. Well bowled, James Anderson. That was becoming very awkward for England. But he's bowled a good delivery. Morkel's done his job, though. He's played pretty well for his 18, but now he's on his way. Super delivery from Anderson. The classic in-swinger to the left-hander. Maybe it didn't pitch, ideally, on leg stump. And that ends some useful work from Morning Morkel, who made a, a flourishing little 18. South Africa now lead by 62. Yeah. 
Oh, what a shot from Boucher. Oh, how did that miss? It's gone through the stump, surely. Oh, they're gone this time. Went through the uh, gate last time, went over the top. This time he knocks the stumps out the ground. Andre Nell had no clue. Swinging ball. This is called comprehensively bold. Lovely sight for a bowler, actually, to see that. Unless you're the bowler who suffered it. Off he goes. Nell bowled for a duck. Oh, that's a slog. And it's a good slog, is that? He's cleared the fielders who are about three quarters of the way back. That's a good strike. Oh, that could be a few. Or is it out? Oh, Monty have dropped it. An absolute cuckoo. And on top of that, Boucher gets a single and he's got the strike again. Not good at all. Oh, that could be out. Is that... is that... Yes, what a catch. Michael Vaughan at last. Nothing wrong with the knee there. Captain made a lot of ground and held on. It's an astonishing catch by Michael Vaughan. If ever there was a driven man going after a ball, there have been two like that in this innings. James Anderson's of his own bowling. And now that one by Michael Vaughan. The speed across the ground and then the utter commitment. The catch-it-at-all-costs commitment. Two hands. Yeah, no, that's really fantastic cricket. It's been a super effort by England this morning. It's been wonderful cricket to watch. 72, Mackenzie, 64, Callis, 39, Prince, 40, Boucher from 49. What an innings. 314, the South Africans. A good advantage over that England bowling attack. Three for side bottom, three for Anderson, four for Andrew Flintoff. Could have had six, could have had seven. He's the one who made it happen. Nothing for Collingwood or Panasar. The lead for South Africa as these two second innings begin. 83. England are away, and that's a neat shot from Strauss as well. Just taking the heat out of this South African attack. Oh, that's a bit of a loosener. And neatly dispatched by Alistair Cook. And they enjoyed that, the people in the Eric Holly stand, especially seeing Morkel diving in despair. to get underneath and he should be able to he does too early on that shot from Alistair Cook suckered into a loose one and South Africa have got their first wicket and that's a real shame for England who were looking good yeah Alistair Cook that really wasn't a very very good shot he had plenty of time to get into position to play this in fact I think he was there just a little bit too early and he's just trying to roll the wrist now that's a big breakthrough for South Africa that's what they would have been hoping for Cook's gone for nine, 15 for one. Michael Vaughan now comes on strike. And he was out first ball in the first innings. In fact, he's had a pretty poor series against South Africa. Only 23 runs so far in it, averaging less than six. Big pressure on the England captain. Never been out for a pair in a test match, Vaughan. That was a nice sighter for him, actually. That will just calm his nerves a bit. Now here's Vaughan up against his nemesis from the first innings, Andre Nell. Still on naught. And now he's not. <laughs> that really was not the best ball from Nell to give Michael Vaughan the perfect little Christmas present for Vaughan to get him away. Pulled by Vaughan. Well, that's an encouraging sign for England. Certainly, Macarantini is the easiest bowler to play that shot to on this pitch. Oh, it's out! Oh, Michael Vaughan's gone for his favourite cover drive. Lovely big stride. I bet he thought that was four as he played the shot. He's come in trying to be positive. And look at it, he spooned it straight to cover. That's a, 
A mistake by the England captain when he looked to be moving his feet very well. I have to say, yeah, he's cross about this. Well, I bet he is, because he was seeing it like a football and, in fact, almost hit it too well. And really, it wasn't very far off the ground. It was a sharp piece of work by Hashim Amna to pluck that off the ground. But I'm afraid it's another failure for Michael Vaughan. 39 for two, England. And the 50 comes up for England with that lovely stroke. The point really is that the deficit is 33 and two wickets have fallen. South Africa will be very pleased with what they've achieved so far. Good shot. Full face of the bat, full value for Kevin Peterson. bowled by Mornay Morkel. He eventually got the line right and Andrew Strauss has succumbed to it. It really was a very, very good delivery. It's a good catch too by Jacques Callis, who's an excellent slipper, but yet again that line from around the wicket has found out Andrew Strauss. Still England 13 behind. Strauss has gone for 25 at 70 for 3. Ian Bell's off the mark. Oh, that was a nice little present for Peterson there, accepted gleefully. 83 for three, England, which draws them level with South Africa. Takes England into the lead. Carantini taking over from Morkel at the pavilion end. And Bell's hit one straight up in the air. This could be an easy catch. It will be an easy catch for Boucher. That is a soft dismissal. The second one in this innings. Ian Bell hangs his head, but unfortunately, he's only got himself to blame, Geoffrey. That's not just a soft dismissal, it's an appalling dismissal. Bell was playing nicely for 20. Giving it away, England now in bigger trouble, 104 for four. Sword of Damocles is hanging over Paul Collingwood's head after a woeful summer for England in Test cricket. 43 runs is made in six innings at an average of 8.6. This could be his last chance to try and rescue something. That's well, that's a good response from Collingwood. Similarly, in fact, to the way Michael Vaughan dealt with a short ball from Makai and Tini. He's not going to go down without a fight. Oh, well, that somehow got through everything. Edged again. Exactly the same thing. This time, a bigger bit of bat on it. That gives Peterson a half century. Not one of his most fluent or flamboyant, but given the situation. An extremely valuable one, England lead by 54. That's a flashing drive from Collingwood. Feet nowhere near it, but accepting a bit of width off him from Callis. Oh dear, another one. That's the 50 partnership between Peterson and Collingwood. Threw it again. That's too short and wide from Nell. Yeah. Oh, Collingwood's got confidence here. Just lobbed him straight over the top. That brings up the lead of 103 for England. And since T, they've scored 60 runs in this as the 11th over. The score is galloping along. South Africa have lost control here. Hit that. Oh, 200 up for England. Oh, 
Short ball again. Oh, that's a hundred partnership. Collingwood's pulled it for four. Breaks into 49. It's the first hundred partnership of the match. England lead by 124. I could tell that was coming, I could sense it, and he's hit it. He's left-handed, sweep, not a reverse sweep that. He turns his hands around, he does it so early, the bowler ought to see him. Again, there we are, another one. No, I don't think he thinks you can bowl, Mr Harris. play Paul Collingwood that brings up his 50 first 50 of the summer he made three fifties in uh, New Zealand in, but here it's like a lifeline for him isn't it oh what a major moment for his career 50 of 61 balls oh he's going oh, where is this oh he's hold out you, well, what do you say to that? He's crossed with himself, so he should be. This partnership has had South Africa in the palm of the hand. And he's tried to slog it over the man halfway back. Look at this. Didn't have to do it. But it's the way he plays, Kevin Peterson. He's thrilled the crowd. He should be cross. But it's a wonderful 94, 136 balls, giving England a lead of 136. Now, it looks as if Paul Harris has switched to bowl around the wicket to Andrew Flintoff. Oh. Get it. And, and out, 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 out! Back to back, Flintoff and Peterson. What a moment, what a job done by Paul Harris, the man they said couldn't bowl. Fantastic performance, a persistent performance from him. The ball angles on with the arm and then Hashim Amla, sharp as you like at short leg. There is a deathly hush, not a sound around Edgbaston. Flintoff has gone for two. Crafty, really crafty, look at it run away. Now there's some placement and some timing and actually some elegance too. Beautiful shot. Tempted Yorker and not a bad idea. And that takes Collingwood to 91 in the lead, now 195. Oh, Collingwood's gone over the top. The confidence growing galore. That could be six. Oh, yes, the crowd are up. What a wonderful performance. It's a real, been a real test of character. They'll probably look back on his test career and think, well, I probably play better innings technically and aesthetically but this will be one of the best moments of his life through character adversity difficulty in the 297 for six paul collingwood got a rousing reception not just from the crowd but from the south african players too it was the most splendid scene as he left the field look at that everybody standing to him this has been one of the bravest and most exhilarating performances you could ever wish to see Confirmation of that total. Paul Collingwood there with 101. Tim Ambrose still there with 19. His role is not to be underestimated, not just in this partnership, but uh, with what's to come too, as he can press on towards 350. Kevin Peterson, of course, quite brilliant. That was a startling performance from him. He took risks and he made life very difficult for the South Africans. None of the South Africans bowled anything like they can, except for the spinner, Paul Harris. 21 overs, three maidens, two for 60. Economy rate of 2.86. He did an important job there as the seamers picked up a few wickets with him. England, 231 and 297 for six. South Africa, 314 all out. The fact is, England are 214 ahead with four of their second innings wickets in hand. 
Smith's got to get his captaincy right this morning. I think he had a poor day. I think the fast bowlers did. Now they could do with a good morning. Oh, that's out. <laughs> well, second ball pitched up. I think he played across the line there, Tim Ambrose. He seemed a real airy, fairy little sort of waft a leg. Well, they're delighted because they really do need to get into the game, having had a bad day yesterday. A valiant little contribution from Tim Ambrose of 19 comes to an end, and England now 297 for seven. Oh, he's nearly fallen on his stumps, but it doesn't matter. He's got it away, Paul Collingwood, for four. Every run is important now for both sides. Whoa, Ryan side bottom. May never forget that one moment. 251 in front now, England. <laughs> what a shot! Oh, hey, well, what do you do after that as the bowler? On the up from Ryan Sidebottom, imperious. That could be out, and is, I think, off the glove, probably of Sidebottom. So, a good response in the end from Morgan, getting one up into the rib cage of the tail ender. And finally, after an hour and 20 minutes, this morning they get their second wicket. Morkel in the end got frustrated, he bounced him, tucked him up into a body and then it became a simple catch but from England's point of view it doesn't matter, they got a very very splendid lead of 279, 362 for eight. Oh, straight onto the stumps and that is a big celebration with Jacques Callis, partly because obviously it signals near the end of the England innings, but also because that's his first wicket of the innings too. Well, it's hard to blame a tail ender when he gets out because his main job is bowling, but I did think that was a bit extravagant. Um, Jimmy's just come in, he's had seven balls, one run, and there's Collingwood, 135 not out, could get a lot more runs, so his job was really to stay there. 363 for nine. Superb comeback this by South Africa. The last three wickets have fallen in very quick succession. And finally, Paul Collingwood's triumphant and valiant innings comes to an end for 135. And everybody in the crowd quite rightly rise to him for a tremendous performance. And the hard facts are there to support Simon Hughes. 135 from 195 balls. That's good scoring rate for Paul Collingwood. And those partnerships with Tim Ambrose and Ryan Sidebottom really hurting the South Africans today. Who'll forget Kevin Peterson's effort? 94. That's what set it all up and set the South Africans on the back foot. Four in the end for Mornay Morkel. Four for 97. Amazing performance, really, because at no stage did he bowl at his best. One for Andre Nell, two for Macarantini, one for Jacques Callis, and two crucial wickets for Paul Harris lovely excellent position from Graham Smith and very positive intent the uh, crowd have come alive Flintoff has been given the ball for the first time the 12th over it's still hard it's still new can he make the breakthrough England still waiting to get amongst these South African batsmen. Good shot. Nicely played. He got inside that, the young McKenzie. Lovely timing and touch. He knew exactly what he was trying to do. Oh, that could be out. That could be out. He hasn't seen it. He hasn't seen it. There's a the breakthrough. Flint off very cleverly. Use that very fast, full, straight Yorker that he gave Cali such trouble with. And he's done the trick. You can see when you see the replay, he did not pick it up. For some reason, the South Africans cannot pick up Andrew Flintoff when he bowls that full ball. It might be the blue seats at the pavilion end, it might be the dark windows, but either way, they've had real problems with that exact delivery. It just catches McKenzie outside the line of off stump, but of course he's not playing a shot. 
So you can be given out LBW as long as the ball is going on to hit the stumps. Joy for Andrew Flintoff. It is brilliant fast bowling from a cricketer who can inspire the nation today. South Africa's first wicket has fallen. No, I think probably missing leg. No, Alim Dar says out. Fantastic work by Panasar. He bowled a few just outside of stump, which Amla had left. And then he was defeated by the one that seemed to skid on with the arm, Barry. Yeah, much better delivery, and that's Monty at his best. I'm not sure this is out. Alim Dar seems to give them out on the back foot, but not the front foot. I don't know whether this is a little bit high. We'll have a look at it. It's hit him above the roll quite a long way. And uh, there we get the confirmation. I thought it might have been going over the top. The umpire's decision is much more important. South Africa lose their second. Amla's gone. 78 for two. Jacques Callas comes to the crease. Two down. Just over 200 required. What a partnership this has to be. Two most experienced players in the South African side. Oh, clear. Could that be out? Yes, it is. It's a full toss. He's totally lost sight of that Callis. He can't believe it. He's standing there furious, nearly actually whacking down the, the bales or whacking down the stumps after that decision. Joy on the England face is an absolute despair on Callis. Well, this is a massive moment. Callis is absolutely livid. He didn't spot that at all. It's come out of uh, probably the window at the back, and he's not happy. He reckons this might have been a little bit too high. Where was it? Callis hasn't spotted it. It's hit him just below the waist. And Jacques Callis is on his way for five. South Africa in all sorts of trouble. 83 for three. a good ball Nashville Prince must go lovely seeming delivery from James Anderson England are going crazy out there we've known this is a stronghold for English cricket for a long time huge crowd get behind them they feel almost unbeatable here well they know they've got South Africa on the run the crowd know the crowd's up for it the players are and I wouldn't be surprised if there's a clatter of wickets. If England really ball well at both ends, I think you'll have some really stirring cricket by England. 93 for four. Wonderful. Wonderful batting. And it's what's more, it's 50 for Graham Smith. One of the very few players to go past 5,000 runs as uh, a test match captain. Oh, he's hit that well. And he's placed it right in the gap. Anything short will get put away here. He's playing really well, he's Graham Smith, but he'll have to play well for a long time. He needs a big hundred here. Really bad ball is that. Really, Monty, there's something in the pitch. There's a little bit of turn, put pressure on the batsman. 50 partnership, too, between these two, and it's been very welcome from South Africa's point of view. Just 138 required. Oh, that's close now. I think they broke the wicket before the ball had arrived there. Oh, dear. That was a possible opportunity for England. Either Ian Bell dropped the ball or he broke the stumps. Oh, there you are. He drops the ball and then he breaks the stumps without the ball. Clearly the ploy here is to try and dry up Smith's runs, bowl outside off stump, make him chase the ball as he does there. But he chases it rather well. Finds a gap between extra cover and mid-off with a majestic drive. That's it. That's the one. Monty strikes. And de Villiers has got to go. It's been a very, very good partnership for South Africa. It's in the balance again. They were looking like they might just count it down and then Monty strikes. Beautifully bowled. You see, drawing him on the front foot, tossing it up, turning. That's an excellent, orthodox, perfect left arm spinner's delivery. It's 171 for five. 
quite a dramatic rearranging of the field here by Andrew Strauss, who's captain temporarily while Vaughan's off the field. Smith 99 goes to 100. Fantastic innings from the South African captain. Really, he's played as well as he could possibly have hoped for. What a moment and what an opportunity he's given South Africa. Very fine stroke, Mark Boucher got onto that so quickly. Oh, that's four. Not a great delivery. Shot. Shot, shot. Played wonderfully well. He really doesn't look as if he's going to get out. Glorious shot from Mark Boucher. That's really his first solid shot on the offside. And the partnership now worth 59. Wonderful straight drive, unstoppable. Mark Boucher's playing a cameo here. Right, the South African captain, Graham Smith, has claimed the extra half hour. The position is that if one team wants to play on for half an hour because they feel they have a chance of winning the match this evening, the umpires can grant them that opportunity, which is what they've now done. South Africa needing 24, and there'll be eight overs bowled. A beauty! Perfect on drive by Graham Smith. What a stroke that is. It's a shame in a way that the crowd is so quiet and the ground is emptying because this batting deserves tremendous support and applause. <laughs> 150 for Graham Smith. Typical turn off his body off Monty Panesar. It's also the 100 partnership bought up by this pair, Smith and Boucher. Shouting. No, leg by. Oh, two to win, South Africa. They're all waiting, ready, his teammates. Someone on the edge of the boundary waiting. Don't get out, you don't deserve to get out. You play fantastically well. There it is, that, that should be it, that's it. The winning runs came from the band that mattered. The captain, Smith, what a fantastic innings, 154 not out. South Africa win by five wickets, they win the series. The first time they've beaten England in a series in England since their readmission to Test Match Cricket. It's a wonderful moment for them. Tremendous run chase by South Africa, the highest fourth innings total ever made here at a test match at Edgbaston, dominated by Graham Smith, 154 not out, but don't forget A.B. de Villiers, 27, and also Mark Boucher, 45 not out. No real hope for the England bowlers, Anderson with one wicket, Panasar disappointing, two for 91, and Flintoff tried his best with two for 72 from 20, but in the end, South Africa were just too good to win by five wickets and take the series 2-0.